Now, as any man will tell you, when you get started on a project like this, you often quickly realize you don't have the right tools for the job. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Sunday, January 21st here in South Georgia. And while a lot of people have been stuck inside this weekend because it's been too cold, your boy's been out here playing Paul Bunyan. So, got some really exciting news to share with you about an expansion of our fig orchard. But first, a little context. So a week or two ago, I was telling y'all how I've got about 60 new to me fig varieties here that we're propagating in the greenhouse. But the problem is, I don't have anywhere to put them. So if I plant any more fig trees on our property, I'm going to have to give up some garden space. And I really don't want to do that. So our two acres ends right where those pine trees there start. It ends on the back end where those pine trees are as well. So plan A was to buy another piece of property, a few acres, start a new fig orchard on that property, and eventually build a house there and move there. That hasn't really worked out. I haven't really found any land that we liked. And as everybody knows, interest rates are pretty crazy right now. So then we went to plan B, which was to try and buy some of this pine tree land from my wife's uncle. And that didn't really work out because he's got it tied up in this whole conservation thing where you save money on your property taxes. That also means he can't sell it while it's under there. There's all these legal conditions with it. Brooklyn knows a whole lot more about it than I do. So then we went to plan C where I proposed he rent or lease me this little rectangle of land between my fig orchard and his pond. So that's what we settled on and I'm really excited because we can plant a lot more fig trees now. The only kicker is there's a bunch of big pine trees in the way. Now this may seem like a daunting task, converting this pine forest into a fig orchard, but this ain't my first rodeo, cause right here, before we had fig trees, we had pine trees just like those. Now they weren't as big as those are now, but we've done this before. So the plan is, just like we did before, take every row of pine trees and replace them with a row of fig trees. There's four, maybe five, if you count the row closest to the pond. Let's just say four rows of pine trees in here, which will give us four rows of fig trees. I probably won't plant any right there on the pond dam. Can you see Chloe down there? She's doing a little hunting this afternoon. Now I could hire a local land clearing company to come in here and take out these pine trees. They could probably do it in a day pretty easily but I'm gonna do it myself, let me tell you why. So reason number one would be the moolah. Now, I didn't even quote getting these removed by a land clearing company, because I got a good feeling the way the prices of everything else have gone up in the last year, that it would cost a lot more than I'm willing to pay to get them taken down all at once. I also didn't want a lot of big equipment in here making a mess because the area between those rows of pine trees is nice and flat didn't want a lot of equipment in here making ruts and stuff that i would have to later kind of smooth out and clean up number two i just thought it'd be a nice little character building exercise for me and the boys there's only about i don't know 70 or 80 pine trees out here we do two or three a day we'll have it knocked out in a couple months and it'd be ready to plant fig trees when we're ready to plant fig trees and I think we'll appreciate it more if we do it ourselves. Once we're done and it's all planted in fig trees, we can just kind of stand back, look at it, and have a nice sense of satisfaction, remembering all the hard work that went into it. Another thing is, I don't need all this at once. I don't have enough fig trees in the greenhouse to plant all four rows there. So technically, I don't have to take out all these trees by the spring. I just need one or two rows for the spring so I don't have to be in a huge hurry to get them all out of here at once. And the fourth reason I wanted to do this myself, I absolutely love burning piles of limbs. One of my favorite things to do. I tell Brooklyn all the time we're on the way to Albany where they're expanding the road and they've got all these piles of limbs alongside the road. I tell her when we ride by, I said, man, I wish I could be the person in charge of burning all these limb piles. That would just tickle me to death. And she always laughs and like, of all things, you would want to be in charge of that. I don't know what it is. I just love burning limb piles and I'm going to have several good piles to burn as we cut down these pine trees. So I got started on this side yesterday. And as you can see right over there, got me a nice little limb pile going. 
Now, as any man will tell you, when you get started on a project like this, you often quickly realize you don't have the right tools for the job. While our little battery powered Ryobi chainsaw was good enough for that big fig tree, it was no match for these pine trees. So that meant I had to take a trip to the hardware store. So I made it 38 years without ever feeling like I needed to own a gas powered chainsaw, but that changed this weekend. Finally had to go invest in a good old steel gas powered chainsaw so I could zip through these pine trees and limbs a lot faster. Now you'll notice here, I haven't been cutting these at ground level. I've been cutting them at about waist level. I've been doing that for several reasons. One, it's a lot easier for me to make the cut I need to make to get the tree to fall the way I want it to fall cutting at waist level as opposed to stooping down and trying to cut closer to the ground. Secondly, I didn't want me and the boys tripping all over stumps while we're walking through here piling up limbs. With them sticking up like that, I know exactly where they are. And thirdly, you'll notice a lot of these trees have a bunch of vines and mess around the bottom, which means I would have had to rake all that away to get a nice clean stump job on these trees. So instead, what I'm going to do when we burn how many ever piles we have, we're going to burn this forest floor here as well. That should clean up the base of these stumps, make them a lot easier to stump down the road. And so once we get all those trees cut down and get all that burned off, we'll cut the stumps to just a few inches above the ground. No need to dig them up. We'll leave them right there. We'll plant fig trees between the stumps and these pine stumps in just a few years will rot like this one here has. Now, not only is this going to give us more room to plant fig trees, it's also really going to help this back row of fig trees in our orchard because that row is going to get a lot more sun once these pine trees are gone. Now, one thing I've always noticed is these fig trees on the back row of the orchard don't grow near as fast as these trees up here that are further away from the pine trees and obviously get more sun. So a lot of people will ask us, does a fig tree have to be in full sun? Can it have a little shade? Yeah, it will still grow with a little shade, just won't grow quite as fast. So once we get those pine trees out of the way, get a lot more sun on these trees, they should start growing a lot faster. So for my best estimation, this expansion should allow us to grow about 80 more varieties. That's planting two trees per variety like we always do. And just as a side note, while we're out here talking about fig trees, we have started stepping up some of our baby fig trees into these pots we use for shipping. Just did some LSU gold trees the other day. Now, these won't be ready to ship until April or so, but pretty soon we will start taking pre-orders on the website for a lot of the varieties we have as they are available as we know what our inventory will be. So if you haven't already, go to our website, lazydogfarm.com, join our email newsletter list so you can be the first to know and get the varieties you want to get. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you're as excited as we are about the fig orchard expansion. We'll be sure to show you the progress as we make it over the next few months. And if you want to see some of the fig varieties we have when they're producing delicious figs, watch this video that we did last year when a lot of our figs were producing. You'll get to see what some of them look like. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.